Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, those of you who've been watching this Resource of the Week series for this academic year will know that one of my aims has been to dip much more into the wonderful world of primary mathematics resources on TES Maths. And this is for purely selfish reasons, and that is because I think I'm pretty rubbish, or I have been pretty rubbish, at teaching my Year 7s. And that's because, firstly, I don't know enough about what my Year 7s mathematical journey's been up to that point. I don't know, and it's terrible to say, but I don't know how much mathematics content they've covered and to what depth. But secondly, I don't think I'm that skilled when it comes to teaching or, or revising those baseline skills, those number skills that are needed, those, those, those things that are the foundation for everything else that mathematics needs building upon. So I thought, instead of trying to figure it out myself, why don't I tap into the wonderful world of expertise that's out there on TES Maths and start nicking some of these incredible primary maths resources. So I've shared a few of them in the past and go back through the Resource of the Week archive and you'll see those, but whoa, Imagine my delight when I came upon this one, because this is flipping brilliant. So it is a key stage two problem of the day compilation, which has been created and shared by White Rose Maths. Now, let me give you a little bit of background upon this resource. Basically, in the build up to 2017 SATS exam, White Rose produced a problem of the day, I think from the 1st of March, right up through to, to the day that the exam started. And these were tweeted out and also shared on TES. And these problems were absolutely brilliant. So by popular demand, White Rose have grouped them together into a compilation PDF. And here is the result. So you get a nice little bit of background on the resources and how to use them and all that kind of stuff um, and the, the different styles and nice bit of teacher guidance. And then you get into the problems themselves. So most days you'll have two problems. Some days you'll have one. If it's a biggie, some days you'll have uh, three or four. If it's, uh, here you go, you've got three here. But a couple of reasons why I love these resources. And um, the first is they look nice. And I know that sounds a bit stupid to say, but it's so important for me that the consistency and presentation of, of the material, it's just clear, the diagrams are clear and so on. Um, the other thing I love is the range of content they cover. And again, this is me being a naive, stupid secondary school teacher, but I'm always blown away by the range of math students I've encountered in all the major areas, number, algebra, geometry, and shape. But the thing I love about these is two features of them. Firstly, contextual, and secondly, interleaved. So you'll see you've got problems in context. You'll see that it's not apparently obvious. So look at question two there. If I just move my stupid face out of the way. It's not apparently obvious what topic that covers. Question three, it's not immediately obvious what it covers. Question two there, we get things in context. So I love that about it. I love the contextual element. So it's not just kids carrying out standard routines. It's them having to figure out what algorithms or what rules or what topic a particular problem is. The other thing I love is the interleaved nature. So again, question two here, look at this here. So we've got fractions involved and we have a bar model involved here. And um, on question one here, we've got a bid mass involved, different operations. You get different topics, both thrown into the two uh, problems for a given day, but also within problems sometimes as well, you get area and perimeter combined, you'll get basic formula combined with arithmetic skills and so on, you'll, you'll get uh, units of measure combined with simple ratio and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just nice to keep kids on their toes. So here, here's a good example here, you get a pie chart here and you get percentages combined there. So they're just lovely for that. So the question is, how do we make best use of them? Well, two, two things that we do at our school. So the first is we've got here 30, I think, 31, or I think it may stop. So, oh, I should say as well, whoa, answers included as well, always a bonus for me. So you've got 31 days worth of um, material, maybe lose a couple because of the weekends. So let's say you've got 23, 20, 24 days, something like that of material. So that is more than enough to do one of these um, a week for a vast majority of the year for year sevens. So why not have a thing where you uh, perhaps pick Monday or Wednesday or whatever and the start of every year seven lesson or every year eight lesson is one of these questions or is a page of these questions where we're two of them. And it just gets this consistency in where kids are seeing um, unconventional, unfamiliar problems. They're having a go at it. They're calling back on all their key numeracy skills that they need. It can lead to really good class discussions and so on. So using them regular in lessons is a really, really nice thing to do. And it's all about that regular routine that these aren't just used as one-offs. This is a consistent thing throughout the year. But also we've made use of them as, as a problem of the week. 
So because we're using them in class with our year sevens, we also print them out, put them on the maths corridor uh, notice board. And that gets other kids discussing it because I'm a massive believer of kids discussing maths outside of maths lessons. So if all kids have been having a go at this problem, stick it up on the notice board. Perhaps don't go through the answer with kids in class, but have it as a mini competition. So we have our numeracy coordinator um, who is in charge of coordinating, as you'd hope, coordinating this. So uh, the kids uh, get these, it goes up on the notice board on Monday. Um, all maths teachers just show it to year sevens on Monday. And then kids have got till Friday to hand in their solutions just on a little slip of paper and a random draw is made. And as long as the solution is correct, but crucially presented in a really nice way, kids get a prize. And also any child who's got it right gets a point and this goes onto a leaderboard and so on. And it's brilliant because it gets kids talking about mathematics, but often the hard work in setting up one of these competitions is trying to find the quality questions. Well, problem solved here. They're, they're all flipping here and they're absolutely wonderful stuff. So I'd strongly advise either making them a regular part of your lesson or making them part as a uh, puzzle of the week competition to get kids talking about math or a bit of both. And yeah, I just absolutely love these. So I'm, I, I already can't wait for SATS 2018. I never thought I'd say that, but I'm just hoping that a similar thing gets released because these are absolutely wonderful. So if you like these, hop on, give them a download, give them a review, make use of them. And I will be back with fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.